So welcome, welcome, welcome to this amazing session on CA Final Financial Reporting, where we are starting with a new topic today, and that is going to be financial instruments. But before that, I hope your audio, video, video, audio, your audio, video, video, audio is absolutely amazing, right? So on that note, we are going to study this topic, financial instruments. I don't know whether you have heard about this topic or not. Maybe from your seniors, of course, you are studying for the FR for the first time, so you might not know. But sometimes your seniors might. um uh, scare you with this name financial instruments they might tell that it is very big and very difficult let me tell you uh, in case if you have heard something about this if you haven't heard very good if you still have heard from someone let me just clarify one thing this topic is one of the most easiest topic in ca final fr and the most scoring topic right it is very easy i am not uh, telling this just for the purpose of saying it it is very easy sir how many uh, marks does it cover so in exam if you see a, based on the past weightage it will appear in exams for approximately 16 marks to 22 marks this is the average weightage of the chapter that means 15 to 20% of the questions will be there from this chapter how many questions come one big question of maybe 10 marks one small question of maybe 4 marks and one two mcqs maybe here and there right so approximately 16 to 20 marks or at bare minimum you can expect sir is this difficult again i am saying it is not at all difficult it is very easy very easy it is going to be very scoring you are going to love this topic but you will have to be patient patient in the sense you will have to keep some patience because Yes, it has many points. We will have to go on slow. But once we are comfortable with all the points, full topic, then it will become very easy for you, right? So you'll have to keep some patience because there are so many things that you will understand maybe after a certain number of points. So just be patient, just keep on listening, and just trust my process. Everything will be very simple after we start this topic. Okay? So you can give the heading financial instruments. Now, in this topic, you can see there are how many indices I have written. Normally, in one topic, there is to be one index, like index sixteen PP. Index thirty eight intangible. Index forty investment property. But for financial instruments, but for financial instruments, we have not one index, not two index, but three indices. Index thirty two, index one zero nine, and index one zero seven. Total in all three indices, right? So the basic stuff is covered here in thirty two. The accounting stuff is covered under one zero nine, where we will do all the calculation everything. And what about one zero seven? One zero seven only talks about disclosures. One zero seven only talks about disclosures. What is the meaning of disclosures? Companies in the annual report or in the notes to accounts have to give certain level of disclosures. So, what all disclosures are to be given in respect of financial instruments is covered under this index. Just imagine, they think that the length of index is so big that for disclosures they have to introduce a new index, but it is not that big. Initially, you will find it little bit lengthy, but it is not. To be honest, I will concise it for you. Don't worry about it. You know, F R V T A G, right? I will, I will concise it for you, right? So this standard talks about the disclosures. So do we need to learn this? The answer is no. Just remember, whatever we study in Index Thirty Two and in Index One Zero Nine, we have to disclose everything. We have to disclose everything. So disclosures for you are not very much relevant. So we won't. We will not have to cover this topic separately. As soon as you cover these two, we know whatever we studied, we have to disclose. As simple as that. Anyway, so in substance, we don't have three topics. We have two topics in substance. If you see, okay, sir. Anyways, so today we are going to start with this topic, index thirty-two, where I already mentioned all the basic stuff is covered. All the basic stuff is covered. Chalo. So let's come uh, in this topic. So the first point which you need to cover is the point of definitions. Right. Def Achha. By the way, if you can see, there are so many points in index thirty-two. There are more. Uh, there are mostly three points in substance. If you see index one zero nine, just see. One, two, three, four. Under four, there are so many points, right? Then you will see five, six, seven. Then you will see eight. Under eight, there are so many points. Then you will see nine, right? Then you will see ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So many points. So, sir, this seems to be a very big index. No, it isn't. It is very simple. You will enjoy this index. That is my promise to you. You will enjoy this index. You will enjoy working, doing the working of this index. That is that is my promise. Okay. But one promise you have to make. Be patient enough. Keep revising on a daily basis. That is the promise which I require from you. Okay, sir. On that note, let's start with the basics. That is index thirty two. The first point is definitions. Acha. Under the definition, which is the first definition which we need to study, and that is financial instruments, right? So let's start the discussion of this first definition. That is financial instruments. 
ओके गाइस चलो सो सी हियर डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट व्हाट डज इट से इट सेस इट इज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट गिव्स राइज टू फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर वन एंटिटी एंड अ फाइनेंशियल लायबिलिटी और इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स फॉर एन अदर एंटिटी सर वी डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड एनीथिंग इट इज रिटर्न दैट फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर वन एंटिटी एंड फाइनेंशियल लायबिलिटी इक्विटी फॉर अनदर एंटिटी व्हाट इज दिस यू वोंट इवन अंडरस्टैंड दिस द रीजन बीइंग यू डोंट नो व्हाट इज फाइनेंशियल एसेट you don't know what is financial liability you don't know what is equity so first we can discuss some basic definitions after that we can come again towards this definition and we will be able to understand this very easily right so the first definition financial instrument we are keeping on hold we don't know this let's come towards the second definition that is financial asset now open a notebook we will uh, write and discuss everything okay open a notebook just give the heading uh financial assets first we can write the definitions and then we can give the heading of financial asset definitions first point being financial asset now what is the meaning of financial asset first let's try to understand this point it says it is any asset it is any asset that is it is any asset that is now i will bifurcate this into four points so i will need some space okay it is any asset that is first point it says cash if you have any cash balance acha by the way when i say cash of course it includes bank balance also it includes bank balance so if you have cash you will say it is a financial asset let's say if i want to elaborate this point um for instance one sec um mm. one sec i'll just elaborate this for you in our balance sheet in our balance sheet see can you see this is the balance sheet yes sir we can see this okay then under balance sheet come under current assets see under non current also you will see one common name first name is uh, the name here h point financial asset under current asset also you will see this name current uh, financial asset right i am discussing what all comes under this heading you can see there are so many points so all these come under financial asset so under current there is one bifurcation of financial asset then under financial asset you will show all these points right one of these points is you can you see cash and cash equivalents bank balances they come under financial assets so this is what i'm telling you what is the definition of financial asset it says the first point is cash balance if you have any cash balance bank balance it is a financial asset is this clear to everyone very simple nothing to be complicated yes sir okay done <coughs> then next point if you have acha or 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 the b point here is b point equity instruments equity instruments of another entity equity instruments of another entity okay equity instruments of another entity what is the example sir give some example of this so i can say let's say my name is akash kandoi i have my company ak limited now let's say i had some extra funds so i bought shares of reliance right so as soon as i buy shares of reliance can i say those shares become investment for me again i had some extra money i bought some shares of reliance company so that reliance company shares will be what will be investment for me right so i will record on my asset side invest investment in reliance company equity shares so can i say this reliance company equity shares are equity instruments of another entity for me they are equity shares of another entity so these investment in other companies equity share 
is also a financial asset. This investment in other companies' equity share is also a financial asset. Achha, do remember for anything to be a financial asset, first it has it has to be an asset. So investment is an asset for us. Now, if you invest in another company's equity shares, it is a equity instrument of another entity. Is it simplified for you guys? Yes, sir. Okay. So this was the B point. You can write all. That means either it should be cash or if you have some, some other company's equity shares as an investment, it will be covered here. Or now you will come towards the C point as well. Achha, don't worry. We will have some multiple examples also later on. Don't worry about it. Okay. C point. Under C, we have three sub points, right? Achha. Yeah, under C point, there are three points in totality. Okay, the first point you can write, the first point you can write is C1. Okay, I'm writing C1. Contractual right, contractual right to receive cash. If you have any contractual right to receive cash, you should have a contractual right to receive cash. That means it is not directly a cash balance, but contractually you will definitely receive cash. So that will be covered under C1. Sir, give us some example now. Like this, we can't understand. Achha, asking you some example. Can you give any uh, item where contractually you will definitely receive cash? Any item where contractually you will definitely receive cash? Perfect answer. Your example can be, sir, debtors or trade receivables. Are under these, do you remember we make some credit sale and then these people will give me cash at later stage? Contractual right to, that means for me, for the one who has made the sale on credit, for him, there is a contractual right to receive cash. Perfect answer. Don't worry, we will, get, we will go in much more depth. Right? Okay. C1. Then, Either there is a contractual right to receive cash or, or <coughs> then I am giving you C2. Then I am giving you C2. Okay. C2 is contractual right to receive. Equity instruments of another entity. Just copy this. Contractual right to receive equity instruments of another entity. Written this contractual right to receive equity instruments of another entity. Now, what can be the example of this? So let's try to understand. First of all, it has to be asset. An asset where you have a contractual right not to receive cash. But under this, you are contractually, you are going to receive some equity shares of another company. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard of this, sir. I will give you a good example. Anyone? Yes. What, what can be the example? The example of this can be investment in convertible debentures. Investment in Convertible debentures. Now, now, <coughs> now what, what can be this? See, I have done investment. So, is it an asset? Yes, sir. Under this investment, do I have a contractual right to receive cash? No. Because these are convertible, because these are convertible, I will not receive cash. I will receive shares on conversion. Whenever the maturity comes, maybe after 4 years, maybe after 5 years, on that maturity, in the principal repayment, I will receive shares of that company. For example, these are convertible debentures of Reliance. So, on principal maturity, Reliance will give me shares na, of their own company. Reliance company will give shares of their own company. So, I have a contractual right to receive equity instruments of another company. In my case, I am AK Limited. right? If I have investment in convertible debentures, Reliance will give me their own equity shares on conversion. So, today, these are not equity shares. Today, these are debentures only. But on conversion, I have a contractual right to receive equity shares of Reliance. Right? Point number C, 2. Or, or, there is a third point also. Third point you can write. Don't worry, we will discuss each of them in very much detail, okay? Third point is, 
कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल असेट कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल असेट यस अजय दैट कैन ऑल्सो बी द केस कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल असेट सर व्हाट कैन बी द एग्जांपल ऑफ दिस नॉट डिस्कसिंग नाउ एट अ लेटर स्टेज सो कैन यू सी अंडर फाइनेंशियल असेट देयर आर पॉइंट नंबर ए बी सी अंडर सी देयर आर सी1 सी2 सी3 ओके देयर इज अ पॉइंट नंबर डी आल्सो ओके देयर इज अ पॉइंट नंबर डी आल्सो व्हिच फॉर व्हिच यू कैन लीव एप्रोक्सीमेटली टू टू थ्री लाइंस जस्ट लीव टू थ्री लाइंस हियर ओके जस्ट लीव टू थ्री लाइंस हियर leave it what is that we will discuss later on okay so i have given you certain points under financial asset okay done okay now i will discuss some examples if you want you can take 5 seconds and just go through all the points and then i will give you certain examples okay you will have to tell me under which point does it fall take take 10 seconds and revise this okay just take 10 seconds revise this just read it once because then now we are going to get, play a game and that is very fun that is very fun okay so just read this done reading guys now it's my turn to play a game with you okay so how are we going to play this just give the heading examples okay now we will discuss certain examples you will have to tell me whether these are financial asset or not so prepare three columns one is particulars which is which is going to be a bigger column then you will make a column financial asset or not okay so i will ask you a name of the item you will tell me whether it is a financial asset or not and just to be very much conceptually clear now i want to make you very conceptually clear so what i am also preparing a, a specific column is definition reference definition reference let me tell you this column is only for understanding only for class reference in exam this is not asked so what is definition reference i i will uh, give you one example how are we going to play this okay let's say for example i will give you first item so i will say i have a cash and bank balance now i'm asking you whether this is a financial asset so you will check the definition yes yes cash balance is, is under financial asset so we will say yes it is a financial asset okay but to make things very conceptually clear i will also ask you as per which definition point this is financial asset as per point number a or point number b or point number c1 c2 c3 or d maybe so i will say sir cash is under point number a it is written na so i will write here definition reference point number a see this is no one is going to ask you this in exam okay ki give the as per which point reference it is going to be cash no one is going to ask you this this is only for our conceptual clarity do remember this part understood the game guys it it's going to be fun okay just prepare these columns particulars financial asset or not and then definition reference okay yeah this was the first point guys i wanted to participate in this okay that that is the only way we can uh, study in a much better way even the recorded students we will also try to answer in your mind okay that will be very help helpful for us okay sir the second point is trade receivables whether this is a financial asset so you will check the definition reference and tell me whether it is a financial asset and if the answer is yes also give me the reference number okay as per point a as per point b read is it a cash no sir is it a equity instruments of another entity no sir is it a contractual right to receive cash seems to be sir under trade receivables we have a contractual right to receive cash so you will say yes <coughs> perfect answer c1 very good answer guys this is what i want from you this is what i want from you okay active participation c1 okay chalo done let's proceed third point is inventory now let's make things interesting giving you 5 seconds tell me whether inventory is a financial asset or not about inventory i'm asking think you can think so let me see what answer i'm getting mm. 
हेमा सेज येस किशन सेज नो ओके इंटरेस्टिंग ओके सुप्रजा सेज येस सी थ्री सी देख सी डोंट गो इन सी थ्री ओके सी थ्री आई एम नॉट थॉट यू डोंट गो इन टू दिस हाई वै गिव यू एनी एग्जाम्पल्स नो डोंट गो इन टू दिस ओके आई दैट कैन बी ए बी सी वन सी टू दैट इट ओके मेनिका सेज नो सुप्रजा सेज नो ओके सुप्रजा चेज डन आंसर वेरी गुड ओके नाउ लेट मी लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू those who have answered the yes those who have said yes it is a financial asset let's check whether is it cash whether is it equity instruments of another entity whether it is contractual like to receive cash you might say yes but in inventory if you sell the inventory you will receive cash but here you do not have a contractual right na you do not have a contractual right you are not certain to receive cash like in trade receivables you have a contractual right from that party to receive cash because you have made the sales to him on credit so he is entitled to make that payment for you payment to you so you are contract you have a contractual right to receive that money from him but under inventory no one is contractually obligated to pay you anything or we can say under inventory you do not have a contractual right to receive cash of course when you make the sale you will receive the cash but you do not have a contractual right to receive it from someone else so there is no contractual right here do remember this part okay so if anyone ask you whether inventory is a financial asset your answer will be no and if it is not a financial asset of course definition reference is not relevant okay good so we can proceed let's play the game again fourth item pp if you have a pp is it a financial asset <coughs> is it a financial asset perfect answer guys just like inventory there is no contractual right to receive cash here just like inventory there is no contractual right to receive cash here so not a financial asset right acha to just to clarify this points i can also show you show some things to you see if you see my uh, current assets can you see inventory is not under the category of financial asset under financial asset there are so many things investment state receivables right but inventory shown out of the financial asset separately from financial asset right because this is not a financial asset same is the case with pp pp is not shown under the category of financial asset it is shown separately can you understand my point yes sir so pp ip goodwill intangible you do not have a contractual right to receive cash here guys do remember these points okay sir noted then next point loans and advances given that means i gave loan to someone else so of course when i give a loan it is a asset for me now the question is whether is it a financial asset yes or no if the answer is yes also give the definition reference time starts now so tell me whether it is a financial asset okay supraja says yes c1 kishan says yes c1 hema says yes c1 ajay says okay ajay says one okay interesting manika says again c1 okay so let's try to understand this now now it it will get very interesting whether it is a financial asset the answer is yes how come sir let's check whether loans given is it cash no is it bank balance no is it equity shares of another entity no is there a contractual right to receive cash see whenever you give any loan to someone you have a contractual right to receive that payment again from him now suppose i give a loan i give loan to let's say ajay can i say loan means that ajay will repay me back na that means i have a contractual right to take that money from ajay back again along with interest that means your answer is yes guys it is under c1 contractual right to receive cash very good okay let's proceed point number 6 <coughs> point number 6 investment in equity shares let's say i have of infosys limited of course just to clarify like i am ak limited i have e equity shares of infosys limited tell me whether is it a, a financial asset if the answer is yes as per which definition reference everyone says yes sir it is a financial asset as per point number b let me tell you one thing guys everyone has answered b and i am very impressed with you because this shows your attention level in the class is it a financial asset the answer is yes let me check how is it a cash no is it a direct equity instruments of another entity yes sir i directly have the equity shares of infosys na 
So yes, as per point number B. Okay, sir. Seventh point. It's fun, right? It's interesting. Okay. Investment in bonds. I have investment in normal bonds. What is the meaning of bonds? You know, na bonds. Just like debentures, you can invest in someone else's debentures or bonds, right? Where you give you. Achha, if I tell you the nature of bonds, you will be able to answer very easily. I am not telling you the nature. Okay, you you tell me whether it is a financial asset or not, and as per which definition reference. Time starts now. If I tell you the nature, it becomes very easy, guys. You have to interpret. Okay. Tell me. Okay. Investment in bonds. You can think. You can think easily. Okay. Kishan says yes, C one. Okay. What about others, guys? Okay, Suprasa says B or C two, sir. Mm. Okay. Manika says C one. Okay. Suprasa, see, think logically, na. Bonds are not equity shares. <coughs> Chalo, let's check. Investment in bonds. Now let let me tell you the nature of bonds. What is the meaning of bonds? It is like debentures. If you invest in someone else's company's debentures, you will get interest, and then after a certain period, you will get your principal back in cash. Just like, acha, you don't understand debentures, you understand FD, fixed deposit. What is fixed deposit? If you invest money in fixed deposit, you will get interest, and after the ten year, you will get your principal back. That is bonds. If you if you invest in a bank's fixed deposit, it is known as FD. If you invest in a company's bonds, so company will give you fixed rate of interest. In cash, and then they will give you the principal back. That is bonds, right? I, I at a C A final level, you should know all these things, yeah. Okay, come on. So, bonds are they bonds cash? No, sir. Are they bonds equity instruments of another entity? The nature of bonds is not a equity instruments. In bonds, you get fixed rate of interest, right? In equity, the dividend is not fixed. You also get voting power in equity. In bonds, do not do not get any voting power, guys. So these are not equity shares. Okay, so this cannot be B. Is there a contractual right to receive cash? The answer is yes. Why? Because you will receive the interest in cash. You will receive the principal in cash. That means contractual right to receive cash. People are answering point C two. Are how can it be C two, Baba? Do you have a contractual right to receive equity shares award? In these are not con. I have not used the word convertible bonds, Baba. These are normal bonds. These are not convertible bonds. If they were convertible bonds, then your answer might be different. But these are normal bonds. In normal bonds, you will get cash. And of for principal, you will get your repayment back. Contractual right to receive cash. So it is a financial asset as per point number C one. I hope those who made mistake understand their mistakes. Okay, and I want everyone to try. Even if you make mistake, it is very easier for us also to interpret where are you going wrong, so I can rectify you. Okay, very good guys. Okay, even the recorded students, I am highlighting the mistake of live students because for you also it becomes easy. There might be things where there might be items where. You guys are making common mistakes. That will become easy for you, okay? But yeah, very good. Okay, sir. Point number eight. Point number eight. Investment in. Investment in. Reliance companies. Convertible bonds. Investment in. Reliance companies. convertible bonds so i'll help you with this now these are convertible bonds now if you want to go in little bit depth in bonds whatever you invest you will not get your principal directly you will let's say for example i invested in some companies bonds for 5 years so for a period of 5 years that company will pay me interest and after 5 years instead of paying me the principal they will give equity shares of their own company right that is for example if i invest in reliance companies convertible bonds so for 5 years reliance will give me cash that is i have a contractual right to receive cash and after 5 years for principal amount reliance will not give me money reliance will give me reliance companies own equity shares to me right so i will give i will get interest of course in cash and i will also i will also get principal but against principal reliance will give me equity shares so i will get equity shares of reliance company against principal now you you can evaluate these two separately how for interest i have a contractual right to receive cash so is it a financial asset yes 
बट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू क्लैरिटी इन डेप्थ फिनेंशियल असेट फॉर इंटरेस्ट एज पर विच डेफिनेशन पॉइंट सो इन इंटरेस्ट आई विल रिसीव कैश कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल एड टू रिसीव कैश सो फॉर इंटरेस्ट इट विल बी पॉइंट नंबर सी वन फॉर इंटरेस्ट इट विल बी पॉइंट नंबर सी वन बट 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 फॉर प्रिंसिपल यू विल रिसीव इक्विटी शेयर इट इज अ फाइनेंशियल असेट ये बट एज पर विच पॉइंट ए नो बी नो दीज आर नॉट डिरेक्टली इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट ना एज ऑफ नाउ दीज आर कन्वर्टेबल बॉन्ड्स बट ये यू हैव अ कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल एड टू रिसीव इक्विटी शेयर आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स You have a contractual right to receive equity share after five years. See, do not say that this is point number B directly. If you had directly equity shares of some company, then point number B. But if you have any convertible instruments, where in future you are going to get equity, so today you will say contractual right to receive equity shares of another entity. So point number C two. See again to highlight. In exam, no one is going to ask you. Give me definition reference. No, they will just ask you whether is it a financial asset or not. Even if you are able to interpret this, it is more than enough. But because you are learning FR with AK, I won't leave you so easily because I want to make very conceptually clear things. <coughs> okay, sir, got got this points. Okay, good point. Let's proceed further. Let's say, for example, nine point. There is investment in preference shares. Now, please. Know that preference are not same as equity. Preference shares are different. Equity shares are different. So don't confuse them with or don't mix them up with equity shares. Okay, these are different. So if I have any investment in preference shares, in preference, what all things you get? Normal preference shares are not convertible. These are not convertible. Okay, not convertible. Normal shares. So in preference, what all things you get? You get dividend. Yes, and you also get principal in cash. You get dividend in cash. You also get your principal in cash. Back again, right? So these two elements both comprise of financial asset. And now, because now it is simple, Ajay, Ajay, very good answer. Because you are going to get both the elements in cash, you have a contractual right to receive cash, right? So it will be C one. Very good answer, guys. Okay, okay. Now let's make things little more interesting. Running out of columns. Can I say it is easy? It is fun. You will make silly mistakes, but I want you to make silly mistakes. But it is fun, na? Yes. Okay. Then point. Let's say you have gold. You have gold. Normal gold. Let's say I have gold biscuit. Still like this ring, right? Or this chain, maybe. I have this gold. This is gold, right? I have this gold. Whether is it a financial asset? If the company has some gold biscuit, biscuits or something, you know biscuits? Yeah. Instead of palaji biscuit. Company might have gold biscuit. <laughs> okay, so this gold, whether is it a finance, is it a financial asset or not? Tell me. So if you say yes, sir, then under which point? And if you say no, then no definition reference required. Okay, Kishan says yes, sir. It is as per point number A. Okay, what about others? Suprada says no. Okay. Kishan says yes. Supraja says no. So I guess both of these students should fight with each other. If if there was a physical class, I would have called both of them on the stage and told them to argue with each other because I love to see arguments. <laughs> Ajay says no. Okay, let's evaluate. Is gold a cash? No, sir. You can't treat gold as cash. Okay, cash can only include physical cash or bank balance. Gold is not a cash. Acha. Is gold equity shares of another entity? Is there a contractual right to receive cash? See, you can say, sir, if I sell gold, I will receive cash. But is there a contractual right to receive cash? Is someone, some other party, obligated to pay you something against gold? Hundred percent compulsory. Is there a contractual right with you that you will hundred percent receive cash? There is no contractual right, Baba. Is there a contractual right? No. It is just like inventory, na, Baba. In inventory, did you have a contractual right? No, sir. Of course, we can sell the inventory and we can collect cash, but it is not written convertible into cash. It is written that you should have a contractual right to receive cash, sir. There is no contractual right. No one is obligated to make you a payment against your gold. Of course, you, if you sell, you can convert, 
but the definition does not say whether it is convertible into cash or not definition will ask you whether there is a contractual right to receive cash sir no there is no contractual right to receive cash okay there is a con is there a contractual right to receive equity instrument from another entity no c3 i had not thought you leave it no sir so is gold a financial asset no not a financial asset maximum students will make mistake here they will think that sir we can convert into cash Are, but convertible is not required we want to listen whether it we want to see whether there is a contractual right to receive cash if you are con still confused just look at inventory just look at inventory whether inventory was financial asset no now why why ask yourself you will get the answer so sir gold will be covered under which index no specific index exists as of now for gold. If the if of course you have jewelry shop, it is inventory for you, then index too. Otherwise, uh, if you are using it, then PP for you. If you have held for investment purpose, it is not covered in the financial asset. Then which index to apply, sir? If no specific index is available, you should apply the framework, the basic concepts of accounting. You will apply that. But again, no no specific discussion for gold. Let's proceed further. <coughs> Point number eleven. Now let's make things more interesting. Investment in gold bonds. Have you heard there are gold bonds? That is you are not investing in gold. You are investing in gold bonds where they will of course, uh, these are bonds now. I am not explaining the nature. If I explain the nature then it will become very easy for you. In You have invested in gold bonds. right? So these are bonds which fluctuate based on the price of gold. But bonds, not gold, not physical gold. Okay, so you invest for a specific period. Well, achha, let me tell the nature. You, you, you invest in bonds for a specific period. So they will give you the interest amount. Also, they will also give you the principal back. But the, this interest amount and principal, interest and principal fluctuation will uh, depend on the amount of fluctuation in gold. Simple. Now tell me whether it is a financial asset or not. I, I almost give you the hint here. <laughs> now you, you it is very certain to answer this, okay? Yes, it is a financial asset, sir. Why? Because now it has become a bond, na. And if it is a bond, in it it gets very easy now. Because the bonds nature are such that you will invest for a specific period, you will get interest and you will get principal. Right? So <laughs> I made it easy for you guys. Huh? Don't it, it, it this answer credit should not go to you. It should it should come towards me, okay? Because I made it easy for you. Okay, so now everyone will GP me 1 lakh rupees because I helped you. No? Okay, anyways, C1. Investment in gold bonds. Done, sir. Okay. Next point. Prepaid expenses. Have you heard of this? Prepaid expenses? Achha, if you want to understand this, let's suppose... <laughs> don't laugh okay let's suppose before the start of this batch before this batch started you enrolled for my batch you paid the fees before the batch started right so you paid fees paid by you is an expense for you so you paid expense in advance because after you paid the fees then i will give you the services so for you the fees you paid to me before the start of the batch is a prepaid expense for you similarly for a company if they incur any expense which has not yet accrued, but still the company has incurred it. It is a prepaid expense for them. My question to you is whether this prepaid expense is a financial asset or not. Just Kishan says no, Supraya says no. Straight away they say no. Baba, no. Okay, Ajay also says no. Okay. Not expecting this answers from you. Is it? Are Baba, it won't be a financial asset. Guys, are you sure? Are you sure? Everyone says no. This is interesting. Okay. Prepaid expense. Unfortunately, you all of you are correct. Why? Under prepaid expenses, is it a cash? No. Is it an equity share? No. Is there a contractual right to receive cash? This is the main point which is to be evaluated. Is there a contractual right to receive cash? If you if you incur any prepaid expense. Let's let's take in your in your case. You incurred the fees. You paid the fees in advance. So against this prepaid expense, do you have a contractual right to receive cash? As a student, no. Students won't get cash. You, when you incur this prepaid expense, in return of this prepaid expense, you will not get cash. You will get goods or services from me, na? If you incurred a prepaid expense, 
then you you have a right not to receive cash back again you have a right to receive goods and service to receive services from me similarly when a company incurs any expense beforehand the company will not get that money back in 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 place of that money the company will get goods and services back right so so in prepaid expenses do not say it is a financial asset or do not say we have a contractual right to receive cash just imagine that you paid the fees of this batch am i going to give you the fees written of course not of course not <laughs> right i i will give you services in place of that na yaar so against any prepaid expenses company you can say the company will receive i am talking i am not talking from both of us point of view i am talking from the point of your student who has incurred this prepaid expense as a student you will receive you will receive goods or services and not cash right in return of the fees paid you will get my books that is goods you will get the service of teaching so is this a financial asset the answer is no but yes i i am very proud of you i was not expecting a correct answer but anyway still okay Not a financial asset. Okay, let's make things little more interesting, so that you don't rectify things. Let's say you incurred a prepaid expense, you paid the fees in advance, you paid FR fees in advance, but but but, I refuse to give the service. I refuse to give the service. Students were asking me, sir, will you teach FR? I said I will not teach FR. I will not teach FR. Okay, you you paid the FR fees for English batch, then I refused. I say I don't feel like teaching English. I don't want to teach you guys. I refuse to teach you guys. Okay, so I refuse the service. What will you guys say? Of course, you can't force me to teach, <laughs> but you will demand me one thing, right? You will say, "Sir, give our money back. Give our money back." You will ask refund, na? In that case, so in case if you incur a prepaid expense and that other party refuses to give you goods and service. That means now your prepaid expense has become refundable in cash, or of course bank. So when you incur a prepaid expense for which service or goods has been denied to you, so now the expense which you incurred has become refundable to you. Of course you will say, "Na, yeah, Akash Kandoi, give our money back, give our money back." <laughs> of course you you will not do this with me, na? Okay, anyways. <laughs> I am doing emotional drama with you. Okay, <coughs> so it becomes refundable to you. Now tell me, in prepaid expense, if the service is refused to you, and it has become refundable. Now whether this refundable is a financial asset for you or not? The answer is yes. Now it is a financial asset as per point number C one. Because now as soon as I refuse the service, you guys have a contractual right to receive cash back again. So just you, just because you heard the name prepaid expense, doesn't mean it is not a financial asset. we in real life we should know the transaction nature whether it is going to happen whether the service has been refused so is it become refundable depth check the depth of the transaction right okay interesting sir 14th 14th point but by the way guys if i in case if i refuse will you will you ask your money back from such a poor guy no na you will you will leave na you will say sir what about This money, I I can give you one lakh rupees. We can give one lakh rupees each to you for free, right? This should be your, your motivation towards me or dedication towards me. If this is the case, I'll just drop my GPay number, please. Even for the recorded students, you can also. No, <laughs> chalo. That is that is the only way I can become rich, yar. See, BB Bachelor is go only giving me twenty thousand per month. So accordingly, I'm getting only two point four lakhs. Per annum, poor people, hungry people, right? I can't even order a pizza in this much money, yar. Pizza will come, but of course, then my whole income will go into pizza only. Anyways, poor people, hungry people, yeah, poor India, hungry India, no? Okay. <laughs> the fourteenth point. Let's move towards the fourteenth point. That is interest receivable. Do you understand the meaning of yeah below exemption limit yeah Akash can this below exemption limit uh, Do you understand the meaning of interest receivable and in, let's suppose you invested a fund somewhere you invested in bank FD right so interest has accrued but bank is yet to give you the money so that is interest receivable it is an asset just to clarify in case you don't know interest which has accrued 
but it not, did not receive it yet. So it is receivable. Whether it is a financial asset, of course the answer is now it is simple. Simple um, answer is yes. Why? As per point number C one. Why? Contractual had to receive cash. Right. After becoming CA, we will give it back, sir. You will give me one lakh rupee after becoming CA. Hima is promising me to give one lakh after she becomes a CA. Okay. See, as of now, when she promises me this. I am not concerned with any of you guys whether you become a CEO or not. Hema should become a CEO as soon as possible. <laughs> I am not concerned whether you are becoming a CEO or not. For Hema, it is very important to become a CEO as soon as possible. Okay. Suprada says 20k per hour. Oh, oh, please. Huh? 20k per hour means if I am teaching for 8 hours, one sec. 20 into 8. 20,000 into 8 into 365. My God, I can't even count the zeros. Units, tens, hundred, thousand, ten thousand, lakh, ten lakh, crore. five crore, 84 lakhs. Maja aagya. <laughs> anyways, anyways, Chalo, let's resume, let's resume. Interest receivable, it is a financial asset, we all know this, okay? <coughs> 15th point. Bills receivable. Bills receivable. Whether it is is it a financial asset? Bills receivable. Is it a financial asset? What is the meaning of bills receivable? Do you have heard this word maybe in your 11th and 12th standard? Where where will you should discover what is bills receivable? So you are entitled to some payment. So the other party will raise a bill and tell you that he will make the payment after three months. So it is just like trade receivables only. Small brother, cousin brother of trade receivables is bills receivable. Right? So it again it is a financial asset. Of course, yes. You, you have a yes. Achha, people are saying, sir, please ask a tough one. These are tough only. You are finding it easy. The only reason being you have understood this definition very clearly. Right? Yes. Chalo. Exemption limit will close within a day only. Yeah. Hopefully, yes. Chalo, anyway, C1. Simple? Okay. Chalo, you wanted something tough, right? Okay. Let, let me bring you some tough things for you. 16 point. Security. Deposit given. Security deposit given. Now, what is the meaning of this point? Security deposit given. Let me explain this to you. Whenever you take any property on rent, let's say for example, this is the tenant who is going to take the property on rent. This is the tenant. Right? So whenever tenant takes any property on rent, and this is the owner of the property, okay. Here is the owner of the property. So when wherever the tenant takes anything on rent, he will give the security deposit. The tenant will give the deposit on day one. And at the end of the agreement, the owner will return this back to the tenant. At the end, return security deposit at the end of rent agreement. Let's say for example, I have taken this studio on rent, right? So when I take this studio, I have to make the monthly rental payments. But on day one, the owner will demand some certain deposit from me as a safety deposit, right? So I am the party who is giving this deposit. I am the party. The tenant is the party who is giving this deposit on day one. So for tenant, whether it's, is it an asset? The answer is yes. Why? Why it is an asset for tenant? The reason being that at the end of the agreement, tenant will receive it back. At the end of the agreement, tenant will receive this deposit back. So for tenant, it is an asset. But the question is whether is it a financial asset or not. Even before me explaining this, everyone answered C1. What is this, guys? Answering in advance? Huh? In in uh, Hindi, we say maja nahi aya. Maja nahi aya means uh, did not enjoy this. Rahul Gandhi, no, Modi ji used to say maja nahi aya. That means we did not enjoy this because you were able to answer it so very early. Right? Anyways, but you guys are right. Let me explain this for those who did not understand. Deposit means it is a refundable deposit which the tenant makes on day one. He will receive it back at the end of the agreement. Right? So whether is this deposit a financial asset? For who? For tenant. Because for tenant, it is an asset. Why? Let's say I give you some advance 
I give you some deposit amount today. So after some years, I will take that money back from you now. So for me, it is an asset. Why asset? Because it is a receivable for me in future. So it is an asset. But the question is whether it is, is it a financial asset or not? The answer is yes. Why? Because as we already said, this is a refundable deposit. At the end, end of the agreement, that deposit has to return back to the tenant. So contractual right to receive cash. Security deposit. Give. Okay. Okay, sir. 17th point. Now, let's say I have a trade receivable. I have a trade receivable. I asked something from him. Normally, trade receivables give us cash. Na? But this trade receivable told that he will not make the payment in cash. Instead of cash, instead of cash, this trade receivables said he will not give cash, but he will give bills receivable he will give bills receivable still question it will be the same he will give me bills receivable now please listen from this trade receivable normally is this trade receivable a financial asset the answer is yes from this trade receivable he told he will not give me cash instead he will give me some bills receivable he had some bills of other party which he will give it to me what will I do with these bills? Of course, I can realize this. No? I can go to the party and tell, tell them that I have these bills in your name. You have to give me money now. Right? So, I my trade receivables are not giving me cash. They are giving me bills receivable. Now, see. It is not cash. It is not equity shares of another entity. Okay? Whether I have a contractual right to receive cash directly. See. Whether this trade receivable are directly giving me cash. No. Now, see where I am going. Is there a contractual right to receive equity shares of another entity? No. Is there a contractual right to receive any other financial asset? What is the meaning of any other financial asset? That means this trade receivable is not giving me cash. This trade receivable is not giving me equity shares of another entity. This trade receivable is giving me another financial asset. Apart from cash, apart from equity shares. Again, this trade receivable is not giving me cash. This trade receivable or this asset is not giving me equity shares of another entity. So if apart from these two financial asset, if the trade receivable is promising you any other financial asset, is bills a financial asset for me? Is bills a financial asset? Yes. So this financial asset is promising me another financial asset apart from cash, apart from equity shares. This financial asset is promising me another financial asset apart from cash, apart from equity shares. Then this will be a financial asset but under point number C, 3. Perfect answer. You guys already answered it, but still, I had to explain this. Under point number C, 3. So when a financial asset promises you another financial asset, this, I, I can also explain this financial asset is going to give another financial asset apart from cash because if this was giving cash then it would have been c1 and apart from equity shares of another entity because if this trade receivable would have promised me equity shares of a third company then it would have come under c2 so apart from cash and equity shares of another entity if this trade receivable is giving me any other financial asset then it will be c3 Kishan says one interesting point. He says, sir, right to receive cash still exists. Yes. So when this trade receivable gives you bills receivable and when in your balance sheet you will record bills, these bills will be financial asset as per point number C1 because these bills will give you cash. Right. But again, as I said, this definition reference we discuss in class. In real life, you need not give whether C1 or C2 or C3. You, need, you just need to say whether it is a financial asset or not. You need not give this classification. It is of C1 or C2 or C3. This is for our reference. I wanted to give one example for this. So I gave one example. Of course, we know that ultimately these bills will give us cash only. But I'm not going in that transaction. I'm going, I'm discussing about this initial transaction where this trade receivable will give me bills receivable. As soon as the bills are handed over to me, trade receivables will be out of the books. 
bills will be recorded now these bills will also be a financial asset because these bills i am directly going to receive cash so as for point number c1 but that much depth we need not touch as of now right okay Achha, just to clarify this one example is enough for c3 no need to uh confuse yourself with other things just remember this point just remember this point for c3 right okay so gave you the examples of everything did you guys understand this can you just clarify me yes or no for this did you guys understand what i what explanation i gave you if one financial asset is going to give you another financial asset apart from cash or equity shares of another entity because if this was giving you cash then it would have been c1 if this was giving you equity shares of another entity it would have been c2 so if apart apart from these two it is giving you any other financial asset it is c3 understood okay perfect done perfect i can proceed further yes last two examples which i want to discuss is do you know sometimes we deposit extra income tax sometimes we deposit extra income tax so that income tax becomes refundable to you income tax refund right so normally we say sir we are going to get refund so you will say contractual right to receive cash but there is no contractual right it is a statutory right to receive cash it is a statutory right and statutory right payments are not in the scope of financial instruments not in scope of financial instruments these are covered under another index right so do remember if any uh, income tax refund is to be received by you we know we are going to receive cash we have a right to receive cash but that right is not a contractual right it is a statutory right which are not within the scope of financial instruments okay so not covered here clear okay sir anyways point number 19th let's say you have some investments in subsidiaries joint venture jv means joint ventures or associates let's say you have some investments in subsidiaries joint ventures or associates so see when you say i have a investment in subsidiary that means i have a investment in subsidiaries equity shares so normally we say sir investment in another company equity share investment in another company equity share right so it it can be as per point number b but when you invest in a subsidiary joint venture associate these are already covered by another index right so these are again not in scope why sir because for this different index have been prepared which has which are respectively index 110 index 111 and index 28 so you can just give the reference so if you invest in your subsidiaries let's say for example reliance limit reliance industries has a subsidiary reliance jio right so for reliance industries he is investing in reliance jio's equity shares but because reliance jio is a subsidiary to that main company such investment in subsidiaries are not covered under the scope right so because we have respective index for them so just remember these two three basic points guys are you clear with this yes perfect chalo uh, will you do one thing for me i want you guys to take a uh, a couple of minutes even the recorded ones recorded ones will pause the video revise whatever i taught you in financial asset okay and through the live ones you will also revise whatever i taught you in financial asset giving you couple of minutes okay time starts now just how to revise just read the definition just read the examples just go through them no need to rut off don't rut off just i just want you guys to understand it don't learn anything it's my guarantee at the end of the lectures you will remember each and every point and you can call them very confidently whether these are financial asset or not okay just give them a read okay time starts now chalo let's resume yes so we were done with the definition of financial asset of course there is a point number d which is pending which i will discuss later on don't worry about it but yes we got a basic idea of what is financial asset you guys enjoyed it i hope now i am going to discuss there is something known as definition of financial liability okay so this was first definition right the second definition is definition of financial liability okay now what is the definition of financial liability so it is any liability 
इट इज एनी लाइबिलिटी इट इज एनी लाइबिलिटी दैट इज दैट इज अगेन आई विल हैव सर्टन पॉइंटर्स हियर इट इज एनी लाइबिलिटी दैट इज फर्स्ट आई विल हैव ए वन फर्स्ट देर इज अ सी यर नाउ इट इज अ लाइबिलिटी ओके so think from liabilities point of view don't think from assets point of view think from liabilities point of view so it is any liability that is that is that is a contractual there is a contractual obligation to deliver cash in financial asset we have a contractual right to receive cash because it is a liability here now we are under the pump we have a contractual obligation to deliver cash can anyone give me an example of any liability where there is a contractual obligation to deliver cash if you can give me an sweet sweet example it would be cherry on the cake now oh, acha give me one example very good answer sir the best example can be creditors or trade payables as you say right where there is a where i have a contractual obligation to deliver cash very good supraja very good you went away ahead of giving a better example anyways uh, yes trade payable status simple right this is a1 we have a2 as well what does a2 say a2 says contractual obligation to deliver contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset what is the example of this we will discuss later on a1 and a2 okay there are two more points here one is point number b leave three lines and then again there is point number c these two points i cannot discuss now i will discuss later on so the definition of financial liability is pretty straight forward if you have a contractual obligation to deliver cash financial liability if you have a contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset apart from cash if apart from cash you are going to deliver any other financial asset any other financial asset okay then it will be a financial liability anyways so let's discuss examples because when we discuss examples we get uh, more clarity on this okay chalo so again we will play that game that interesting game so just leave uh, two three lines for a c point as well and give the heading examples ek example chal 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 example okay we have three column particulars particulars tell me financial whether it is a financial liability or not and also just to make things very conceptually clear give the definition give the definition reference as well again just to highlight definition reference is not going to be asked in exams in exams the max they can ask is by asking whether it is a financial liability or financial asset or not okay chalo let's take some examples go slow don't try to rush through things because if you are able to go through this very easily then it will become easier for us at the back end of the chapter okay okay sir so the first point trade payables trade payables so this is very difficult sir i will help you trade payable sir under trade payable do i have a contractual obligation to deliver cash yes sir so it is a financial liability as per point number a1 see guys i helped you with the difficult part now you help me with the easier examples okay deal sir do you do you think we are huchas yeah yes 100% चलो, <coughs> let's proceed further. Loan taken. See, thing first of all, for it to be a financial liability, it should be a liability. Okay, so I am discussing all the liability items. Loan taken. I took a loan. I took a loan. Now evaluate whether it is a financial liability or not. Time starts now. By the way, Supraj already get that gave that answer in the initial part only, but still, loan taken. Okay, Ajay says C two. Ajay, 
Do you feel I am a C? Where did C2 come from? <laughs> we are under financial liability, Baba. It should either be A1 or A2. Where, where, where do you get C2? <laughs> Any, anything. Achha, loan taken. So we took a loan. When we take a loan, let's suppose you take a loan from a bank. Achha, typo, okay, no problem. When you, whenever you take a loan from a bank, you have to repay the interest also and the principal also. How do you repay? You repay in cash only. Na? So when you take a loan, you have to repay the interest in cash. You have to repay the principal in cash. So it is of course a financial liability. As per point number A1. Simple. Very good. Achha, you, you gave the correct answer later on later on. Okay. See, I'm like my wife. I don't see the correct answers. I see only wrongdoings. I will not see what my husband has done. 100 things correct. The one thing which he did not do. He did not take his towel and uh, keep it at the right place. He's gone. I'm like my wife. <laughs> Anyways, hello. Let's proceed. Third. Outstanding salary. Outstanding doesn't mean very good salary. Yeah? Outstanding means a salary which is not yet paid by the company as of now. Think from company's point of view. The company who has not paid employees salary. It is known as outstanding salary. Let's say for example a principal. Your, your main principal, article ship principal has not given you the stipend. Okay, now that for that principal, that your stipend is outstanding salary. Of course, what that what chiller is also known as stipend. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 rupees. Poor people, hungry people. I know even you are poor, poor like me. <laughs> even or not, you are not getting stipend. That's outstanding salary. Whether it is a financial liability, the answer is yes. Why? For company's point of view, if it is an outstanding salary, just think from company's point of view. Does the company have an obligation to deliver cash? The answer is yes. Now, nah. if you have worked in your article ship, you will demand the principal to give your cash back. Nah? If you are saying no, just imagine you working for a month. The principal is not giving you stipend. Tell me one thing, whether that principal has a contractual obligation to give the stipend to you. The answer is yes, because you have worked for it. Huh. When it comes to our stipend, now we, we can feel the pain, sir. Yes, it is a financial liability. For the principal, yes, financial liability as per point number A1. Let's proceed. Fourth point. Advance income. advance income sir give us an example of advance income let's say for example do you remember the fees which you paid in advance for you it was a prepaid expense for me it was an advance income why i received some fees from you for which i have not given you the service that means the revenue which i received which has not yet accrued i i i have not earned your money as of now because I have not even started to teaching. But still you gave me the fees. So for me, from my point of view, it is advanced income. For you, it was prepaid expense. For me, it is advanced income. Tell me whether it is a financial liability or not. I gave you a very good hint now. For you, it was a prepaid expense because you paid the expense early. For me, it is an advanced income. I received my income early. Liability. Advanced income is always a liability for the company. But whether it is a financial liability. So Kishan says no. Supriya says no. What about others? What about others? No. What about others? Whether this advance income will be a will be a will be a financial liability liability or not? So the answer is how do you guys know the answer beforehand? Surprised? Okay. So so just remember when I receive the income in advance, I have received the income in advance. Just evaluate. Do I have a contractual obligation to deliver cash? When I receive your fees in advance, it is advance income for me. But against that fees, I am not going to give your fees back. I am not such kind person. But instead of that fees, I will give you the service. Right? Ah. Obligation to deliver service and not cash. Very good, Ajay. Highly impressed. So here, in future, I will deliver service. In future, deliver service and not cash. So, will it be a financial liability? No, not a financial liability. Achha, just to be very much clear, sir, what if? What if? There is an advance income received by me and I refuse to teach you. I cancel the contract and contract cancelled. 
I received the money from you, and then I refused. I will not teach you. We discussed this in prepaid also. When the advance income is received by the company, but the company cancels the contract. So can I say now the advance has become refundable to students? That advance will be refunded, refundable to students. Of course, in my case, it won't be refundable because you are nice, na. You are nice students. You are so good, cute bunch of students. You will not ask money from me, na, even if I refuse to teach you. But in other people cases, they will ask for refund, na. My students are very unique. They will not ask. Instead, they will give me one lakh rupees extra. I know. I am uh, putting my GPay number. Please transfer. <laughs> okay. So advance income and the contract is cancelled. So if that advance becomes refundable to students, so in that case, yes, it is a financial liability. You're absolutely correct. But as per which point? So as per point number A one, because contractual obligation to deliver cash. Perfect. Don't laugh. Okay. Anyways. next point let's make things little interesting the company issued debentures debentures let's say there were some debentures issued do you understand the meaning of debentures issued debentures issued basically means see there are always two parties to a contract the one who is issuing the debenture and the one who is investing in the debentures the one who is investing in the debentures for him it is an asset and we discussed for the one who is investing it is a financial asset why because that party will receive interest that party will receive principal also back but for the one for the company who is issuing debenture why do the company issue debenture just to raise funds it is just like a loan which the company is taking but instead of taking the loan from bank they are taking the loan from general public so that is why they issue debentures so the company who is issuing the debenture for them it is like a loan na for them it is like a liability because whenever you issue a debenture you give a piece of paper to the investors and in return you receive the money on day one you receive the money on day one it is like a loan when you take the loan from bank you get the money on day one from the bank now you are obligated to make two kinds of payment each year during the tenure you are obligated to make two kinds of payment you will have to also repay the interest in cash and these are normal debentures not convertible so also the principal has to be paid in cash so for the ones who is issuing the debenture it is a liability for them first understand this okay it is a liability why because they are raising funds now let's suppose they raised funds for 5 years so for 5 years they will have to give interest and at the end of fifth year they will have to also repay the principal back so contractual obligation to deliver cash financial liability as per point number a i hope you understand this seems to be very simple na ideally it seems to be simple because you have understood the definition see when i started with financial instruments you were little bit confused na what is financial asset what is financial liability right but as soon as we discussed it it became very much clear to us right it became easier for us this is what is what financial instrument is it is very easy you should know how to tackle it anyways clear with this guys perfect so uh, we'll take a small break now because you deserve it right because the further discussion i can do after the break so let's take a small break and then after the break we can resume okay so till then thank you so much everyone let's take a small break bye bye everyone take care see you all bye bye yeah after the break i will do further discussion okay just to remind you financial liability is not at over there are few other points also in this we will discuss don't worry after the break <laughs>